So I make a lot of mistakes in my videos. You know, I make a ton of mistakes on camera, and most of the time those mistakes are just little mistakes, innocuous mistakes, right? Mistakes that don't really matter. So I don't take the time to uh, re take a clip, you know, because making these videos is a lengthy process. So unless it's something that I really need to go back and address, you know, most of the time I just leave the, the little tiny mistakes in. But the other day I made a pretty big mistake on camera and I needed to go back and address it today. And it re revolves around the video I made just a few days ago about Nitrix. So Nitrix is a Debian based Linux distribution. It's a really interesting uh, Debian based Linux distribution because it has its own customized platform my desktop environment. It uses a lot of MAUI kit programs rather than the traditional KDE programs. And many of its default programs are actually installed as app images. And that's really kind of Nitrix's claim to fame is the fact that it uses app images out of the box. Now, I just said that Nitrix is a Debian based Linux distribution, which is what it actually is. Well, on camera the other day, I had made the mistake of saying that Nitrix is based on both Debian and Ubuntu. And I even when I said it, I knew that doesn't sound right because I've actually done videos about Nitrix in the past and I was pretty sure Nitrix was strictly a Debian based distribution. I know I've said that in the past. So the other day I said it's based on both Debian and Ubuntu because I went to DistroWatch right before making that video and I looked up the Nitrix DistroWatch page and according to DistroWatch, it is based on Debian Unstable, the Debian SID branch and Ubuntu LTS. Which, when I read that, I thought, well, dang, I, I guess it must be based on both of them. Even though reading that, even before I, I said it on camera, I thought, that's weird. Why would you pull from both Debian Unstable and Ubuntu LTS, which is based on Debian Stable? Because wouldn't you have, you know, some conflicting things going on? So even reading this... It didn't make much sense, but I assumed that the distro watch guys did their homework and that they were correct. So on camera, I said Nitrix is based on both Debian and Ubuntu. And immediately I got several people in the comments saying, no, DT, that's wrong. Uh, that's uh, just some misinformation spread by distro watch. And the Nitrix guys are not happy about it. And there's actually been some legit journalism <laughs> done on this topic because a couple of weeks ago over at itsfoss.com you know they had this article written about nitrix linux is demanding an apology from distro watch so the story here is that the maintainer of nitrix is a fellow named yuri herrera and he of course created nitrix so obviously he knows what Nitrix is actually based on, right? So he saw the DistroWatch page about Nitrix being based on Debian and Ubuntu. So he reached out to DistroWatch and said, hey, that's uh, not factual. We're actually just basing off of Debian. We don't actually base off Ubuntu. Uh, they do build their ISOs with some tools from Ubuntu, but they don't actually like pull packages from Ubuntu or anything like that. So he he tried to correct that misinformation there. And they basically ignored him. Uh, there was a guy named Jesse Smith that works at DistroWatch, and he refuses to change that uh, particular information on that page. And even on Twitter, he is telling people, confirmed, Nitrix is based on Ubuntu 2004 and pulls from multiple Ubuntu repositories. Not sure why they keep lying about this on Twitter and their website. So he's actually accusing the, the Nitrix team of lying to people about what their distribution is based on. Oh, why? Like, why would the Nitrix team lie about what they base their distribution on? Like, what is their gain? And why is this guy, this journalist over at DistroWatch, why is he picking this fight? I mean, we've got a, a guy that writes for DistroWatch, and we got the lead maintainer of Nitrix. And they're both saying that Nitrix is based off of different distributions. Which one should I believe? I'm going to believe the guy that actually created the dang Linux distribution. I'm not going to, uh, you know, just because some guy that works at DistroWatch tweeted it, you know, that, that doesn't make it so. Now, the complaints from the lead maintainer of Nitrix goes beyond just, you know, that they're factually incorrect about what Nitrix bases off of. Uh, Yuri Herrera goes on to write, quote, Because of this, we make the request publicly that you and your staff amend the erroneous information that you display on your website about our product, including logos, names, links, descriptions, and versions. Additionally, we demand an apology from you and the staff member responsible for the incident that finally led to this open letter. Our request is non-negotiable 
non-negotiable and we will not accept anything less for our demand. So this article from It's False is actually the reason they wrote this is because the Nitrix team posted an open letter over at the Nitrix website, which is nxos.org. So the, the uh, segment I had just read from the It's False article where Yuri was demanding an apology and he wants them to correct misinformation about names, links, descriptions, and versions. I did notice that on DistroWatch, it's very weird because they just had a new version. Nitrix did a couple of days ago. 1.4, I believe, was the new version. And I know they had had a new version not three or four months before of that because people had asked me to take a look at it and I didn't. But they've had a lot of recent releases. But according to DistroWatch, the last release announcement that they have is from December 2018, Nitrix 1.1.2. Why are they not keeping up to date with the Nitrix release announcements? Now, I, I'm assuming that they can only keep up to date with release announcements if somebody lets them know. But obviously, they've been in recent contact with Yuri about you know, what the distribution is based off of. And he specifically says that the version numbers are also not right as far as uh, releases and what version they're currently on. Why? I, I don't understand. It's almost like the DistroWatch guys are purposely trying to spread some misinformation about Nitrix, uh, like they have a personal vendetta against maybe Yuri and the Nitrix team. So many of you guys know I've, I've never been a fan of distrowatch.com, the website. I hate their top 100 page hit ranking list because they know that that is not really a representation of Linux distro popularity. I mean, they kind of admit that on their website, but you got to dig a little bit <laughs> to understand that it's really just for fun and it's not an actual representation of distro popularity. But they know that the way they present it does trick a lot of people, including Linux journalists, because some Linux journalists even quote the distro watch rankings as, you know, an actual metric that measures Linux popularity. So I really hate that DistroWatch, their their website, focuses so much on those page hit rankings. You know, so much of so, the reason so many people know about DistroWatch is because of those page hit rankings. So it's kind of a uh, it's, it's almost a sham, really. <laughs> the whole website is just, just based on falsehood. But many people was like, are like, hey, DT, I know the page hit rankings suck, but DistroWatch actually has good news articles. Like their release announcements, you keep up to date on what's being released. You know, you go to the individual distro pages and you get accurate information. Well, apparently not. I mean, when you have a, a distro maintainer, and Nitrix is not a uh, just a mom and pop distribution that just appeared yesterday. It's been around for a number of years and they're doing really good work. Uh, there, I think there's an actual corporation behind it. You know, like it's got, it's got some money behind it. it it's not something that's just going to disappear tomorrow. And uh, DistroWatch can't even display accurate information such as what it's based off of or what's what's the current version number i mean they haven't had a release announcement in three years about nitrix why is that i suspect a lot of it has to do with personalities this jesse smith guy that's complaining about it on on twitter he doesn't seem like he's a, a pleasant fellow. I, I mean, if this is the kind of stuff that you want to fight about, you know, uh, what somebody is basing their distribution off of may or may not be basing their distribution off of, e even though the maintainer is actually telling you that you're wrong. Uh, he's, he doesn't seem like a very pleasant guy. Uh, Yuri Herrera, the maintainer of Nitrix. I, I don't know much about him, but maybe he isn't the most pleasant person to talk to either. And, and maybe because of the conversations Yuri and Jesse have had, maybe they're just uh, butting heads a little bit. Because this open letter, I will say, while I uh, completely support Yuri and the Nitrix team, I actually think DistroWatch absolutely needs to reflect the right information on the, the Nitrix distro watch page. And I do actually think they need to apologize to the Nitrix team uh, for, you know, having all of this be incorrect for so long, even though Nitrix has actually asked them on multiple occasions to change it. I think distro watch needs to change it. I think they need to do an official apology to Nitrix, but I do think Yuri, uh, this letter, this open letter is kind of abrasive. I mean, he basically demands a, an apology and he demands an apology specifically from the guy that started all of this, which is Jesse Smith, who's not even like the owner of distro watch, right? He's just a guy I think that, that writes for distro watch. So this open letter, uh, comes across as a little angry 
So, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, again, I think people get uh, they, they let their emotions get the best of them. But in this case, uh, you know, emotions aside, distro watch, th they've been doing a lot of crazy shenanigans for a number of years now. And, and when I saw this the other day, I, I was actually kind of disappointed in myself because when I read that uh, that page uh, saying it was based on Debian and Ubuntu, I actually in the back of my mind, I, I told myself that doesn't sound right. But anyway, when I went to record the video, I said it and then immediately people, you know, jumped on me, not not jumped on me in an angry way, but, you know, they were trying to correct me, which I appreciate those people for letting me know. And that's why I wanted to make the video today, because I think more people need to know that you can't trust a lot of the Linux publications out there, the Linux journalism that's out there. And I've been complaining about DistroWatch for a number of years. And a lot of people will come back and, man, DT, you, you're, you're crazy. I, I don't know what your problem with DistroWatch is. Well, here's a perfect example of some of my problems with DistroWatch. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Absy, Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Archvitar30, Chuck, David, The Other, David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Polytech, Scott, Steven, Smith, Wes, and Willie. They are the producers of this episode. Without these guys, this episode you just watched, it would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because without you guys, the community, I couldn't do what I do. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Why the hell would anybody lie about what their distribution's based on?